How about some wine? Need a glass. Go big or go home, huh? Fog Mountain Pinot Noir. All right, let's give it a shot. Computers can only speak in zeros and ones. How do you turn words into numbers? Natural language processing, or NLP for short, is all the rage in artificial intelligence nowadays. Everybody wants to do it, but very few really know what it entails. One of the first things to come to grips with is that computers don't use words. They use numbers specifically zeros and ones to communicate. So if computers can only speak in zeros and ones, how in the world do you turn words into numbers? Let's talk about it. Text is everywhere, and we wanna use the latest machine learning techniques to understand, analyze, manipulate, and even generate more of it. But first, we've got to get that text into a format that a computer can deal with, that means turning it into a series of numbers, sometimes called a vector. Then, once each word is represented by a vector, the computer can do what it really excels at, using math at very high speeds and perfect precision to make something useful. The first thing we need to do with our text is tokenize it. That's just fancy speak for breaking it down into its core parts, namely words. Then we need to do some house cleaning before we even think about turning those words into numbers. We need to remove all that useless punctuation and any odd special characters. Make everything the same case. Lowercase is actually preferred. Filter out words that add little value, but a lot of noise. What we call stop words in the business. And finally, bring words back to their root meaning using techniques such as stemming and lemmatization. Words like am, are, and is all mean the same thing, to be. So that's what we're gonna replace them with. Now that we've got a clean corpus or collection of words to work with, we can start turning them all into numbers. The naively simplistic approach is to use a simple letter number cite, substitution cipher. Assign a number to each of the 26 letters in the alphabet and just turn each word into a vector of numbers based on their equivalent position in the alphabet. Hello goes from H-E-L-L-O to 8, 5, 12, 12, 15. Unfortunately, all context and interpretability goes out the window, and you're left with a lot of seemingly random digits. Instead of going with the letter by letter route, let's do some counting. The bag of words idea is based on measuring the presence or absence of a word in a certain piece of text. We can do it with a simple yes or no, the word is there or it isn't, or we can actually count how many times it's there. Believe it or not, this simplistic approach actually produces some pretty startling results. Think about it, words have meaning and their presence or absence can influence the meaning of the document they came from. An email with words like congratulations or Nigerian prince, probably a spam. While one with words like corporate balance sheet or analysis is probably not. No one said you have to look at just one word at a time. You could look at pairs, triplets, or n-sized groups of words, commonly called n-grams. By accounting for adjacent words, we're starting to move out of just individual meaning and into the realm of context. Speaking of context, why not count the relative frequency of words rather than their absolute frequency? You see, the problem with counting words is that some words are just used more than others. 
When was the last time you used a word juxtaposition? But in particular, a word used in a specific type of document more frequently than in other documents, well, then you have pretty powerful information. Dare I say the juxtaposition of such a unique word around another common word will definitely grant you more knowledge about the content <clears throat> of the document it was found in. Welcome to the notion of term frequency, inverse document frequency, or TFIDF. Using this technique, we're going to determine the relative frequency that a word appears in document compared to its frequency across all the documents we're looking at. TFIDF is a powerful method that's still used in search engine scoring, text summarization, and document cleaning, just to name a few. TFIDF starts to give us some context around the numbers where we're turning our words into. But the granddaddy of all these contextual methods involves a little more math and the magic of neural networks. Not even 10 years ago, Tomas Kikolov at Google came up with the groundbreaking idea of turning every word in the English language into a vector whose values were based on a small set of words around it. His word to vec algorithm revolutionized natural language processing and led the way to all kinds of other technological breakthroughs. Siri wouldn't exist without his work. The essence of word to vec is the idea that similar words occur more frequently together than dissimilar words. Thanks to the incredible increase in computing power and the availability of huge samples of written text, word to vec had all the data and processing horsepower it needed to build a very good numerical representation of the bulk of the English language. And just like that, all words were turned into vectors that actually meant something and had context. Now that each word was a vector, the computer could use those vectors in mathematical expressions. For example, you could use vectors to build analogies such as man is to woman, as a boy is to girl, or yen is to Japan, as ruble is to Russia. The original word to vec model was built around a very simple one hidden layer neural network. But since then, all kinds of improvements have been made that can truly differentiate nuances in words that even humans have trouble with. Consider the word median. In the context of driving, it's that dividing line down the center of a highway. But its meaning is something completely different from a statistical standpoint, where it re represents the point at which half the data is less than the value and the other half is greater than the value. Both mean middle, but in way different contexts. So, turning words into number, isn't that mysterious after all? And now that you've turned those words into something a computer can work with, we can really rock and roll. We can summarize huge documents, categorize articles into topics, and even generate new text on our own. Oh, the places we could go. Thanks for tuning in. If you're interested in chatting more, let's grab a drink and talk more about it. And as always, happy analyzing. <laughs>